the next topic that we are going to discuss is block diagrams. Okay. So, what is meant by a block diagram? Basically, block diagrams they represent a control system pictorially. We know that there will be various components in a control system, right? So, how are each of these components connected with each other? What is the functional relationship between these components? That is all the information that we get from a block diagram. For example, let us say there is a integrator okay that is represented like this now let us say one input is given and the output is obtained so this means that the output is equal to integral of the input okay so we are able to express some relationship based on the block diagram that is what is the purpose that a block diagram serves so now we will discuss various features of a block diagram okay so what is the first feature firstly we have blocks right now for the lti systems that we are going to discuss linear time invariant systems these blocks they represent the transfer function okay so for example if you are giving the input then the corresponding output you can obtain by multiplying the transfer function into the input right so for the lti systems the block diagram will represent the transfer function and the arrows represent the signals so this was blocks and arrows the next feature that you often see in block diagrams is the summing point okay so this is the point where more than one signal can be added okay added or subtracted so this is how it is represented so we can add multiple signals here okay they can be either added or they can be subtracted right so let us say you have one signal say x of s okay and here you have y of s and here also we will add one more signal this will be let us say z of s then the output of the summing point will be equal to x of s minus y of s because y of s has negative sign it is added negatively okay plus z of s okay so this is the output of a summing point next we have the takeoff point okay now let us say you have one block here and you have one signal here okay so now let us say this signal whatever signal let us say y of s it is coming as the output at this point so the same signal if you are taking it and you are inputting to some other block or some other summing point also wherever that is necessary okay so this point here is called as the takeoff point so once we discuss more about block diagrams you will be more accustomed with all these features okay so we have discussed what is meant by block arrows summing point and takeoff point now we will see the basic block diagram of a feedback control system okay so feedback systems are closed loop systems so the feedback systems they will have input a summing point here okay this here the input is added let us say the input is r of s okay then here you have the feedback signal let us say b of s and here you will have one transfer function this will be the output y of s and from here you have the feedback so here you can see that you have blocks you have arrows this is the takeoff point and this is the summing point so this is one simple block diagram okay but it is very important because even more complex systems they can be reduced to this form 
ok. So, we will see how to reduce a block diagram later on, but for now it is important to understand that complex block diagrams also can be reduced to this form. So, we will analyze this block diagram. So, here R of S is the input and Y of S is the output, right. So, this entire thing this will form the transfer function right because output by input will give you the transfer function. Now, this path here it is the forward path ok and the transfer function that is present here we will represent by g of s this is called as the forward path transfer function ok and this is the feedback this is the feedback path. So, this corresponding transfer function we will represent as h of s. So, h of s is the feedback path transfer function. Now, feedback can be either added positively or it can be added negatively ok and this signal b of s is nothing but the feedback signal. right and this signal the output signal of the error detector ok or the summing point this we will take as the error signal. So, E of S is the error signal. Now, this entire transfer function we will represent as M of S ok. So, we have to find out the M of S. M of S will be equal to the output which is y of s divided by input which is r of s ok. So, the feedback and the forward path transfer functions right g of s and h of s we have to be able to represent the transfer function m of s in terms of g and h ok. So, we will see how to do that first if you consider the feedback signal b of s this will be equal to h of s into y of s right because for this transfer function this block h of s the input is y of s and output is b of s. So, output b of s will be equal to the transfer function of the block which is h of s and input to the block which is y of s ok this is one equation. Next, if you take the error signal E of s, this will be equal to what will be the output of the this summing point, this will be equal to R of s plus or minus B of s, right. But what is B of s? B of s is H of s into Y of s. So, we will replace B of s by H of s into Y of s. Now, if you consider the forward path block that is g of s ok, what will be the output of that block? It is y of s and what will be the input? It is e of s. So, output is equal to g of s into e of s right. So, e of s we can write as y of s by g of s. So, this you substitute in this equation ok. So, you will get y of s divided by g of s is equal to r of s plus or minus h of s into y of s. Now, from this equation you can get y of s by r of s ok. So, this will be equal to g of s divided by 1 minus or plus g of s h of s that means that if the feedback signal is added positively that is positive sign then the corresponding function will have a negative sign right and if the feedback signal is added negatively here then the corresponding transfer function will have positive sign in the transfer function ok. So, to summarize if b of s is added 
positively okay then the transfer function m of s will be equal to y of s divided by r of s which will be equal to g of s by 1 minus g of s h of s okay and if b of s is added negatively then m of s that is the transfer function will be equal to y of s by r of s which will be equal to g of s by 1 plus g of s h of s so these results they are very important it will be best if you can remember this result but in case you are forgetting also you can derive them now this g of s into h of s this is called as the open loop transfer function ok so this is one term that we often use later on so you remember that g of s into h of s is called as the open loop transfer function ok but you have to remember that it is defined for a closed loop transfer function only because for an open loop transfer function there is no there is no feedback path so h of s will not exist so this open loop transfer function that we have told that is for a closed loop system only but we are calling it as open loop transfer function one more important thing here is usually if the sign of b of s is not mentioned that is whether it is added positively or negatively it is not mentioned then it usually means negative feedback ok b of s is usually added negatively so whenever nothing is mentioned you just have to take the negative sign and the transfer function you have to take as g of s by 1 plus g of s h of s now we will discuss some block diagram reduction techniques ok so as we have discussed before the complex diagram the block diagrams they can be complex also but we have to reduce it to simpler block diagrams for easier analysis ok so we will see some few techniques in which the block diagram reduction is possible so if you take two blocks and they are in cascaded form that is one after the other ok so let us say this input is x1 and this input is x2 ok and these transfer functions are g1 and g2 ok now this can be reduced to one single block diagram ok and the transfer function of this block diagram will be g1 into g2 ok so you just have to multiply the transfer function the individual transfer function then you can represent by one single equivalent block ok so this will be equal to x1 and this will be equal to x2 so you can even verify this ok for example what will be the output here it will be the input x1 into transfer function of the block which is g1 ok and g2 after g2 you have x2 right so the output of g2 block which is x2 will be equal to the input is x1 into g1 x1 into g1 ok into the transfer function of the block which is g2 so you will have x2 is equal to g1 g2 into x1 so for this block diagram you can see that the output x2 is equal to input to the block which is x1 into transfer function of the block which is g1 g2 ok so both these are same so these are blocks in cascaded form next we will see what will happen to the summation points in cascade ok so let us say you have one signal x1 and here you are adding one signal x2 let us say this is added positively this is added positively and here you have another signal x3 which is added negatively ok so this is the output what will be the output it will be equal to the output at this point will be x1 plus x2 so the output the final output will be equal to this also let us say it is added positively ok 
So, this will be equal to x 1 plus x 2 minus x 3. Okay. So, now let us say you are interchanging the summing points. Okay. So, here x 1 will remain same, we will keep it the same. This is one summing point and this is one summing point. Okay. Now, instead of adding x 2 here, we will add x 3, but x 3 is added negatively. So, we will put a negative sign here. Okay. x 1 is added positively and here we will add x 2. Okay. So, the summing points can be interchanged in this, in, in this manner. Okay. So, x 2 is added positively. Okay. Now, what will be the output here? This will be equal to x 1 minus x 3 okay. and this is added positively. So, what will be the output here? This will be equal to x 1 minus x 3 plus x 2. Okay. So, you can see that this output and this output is the same. So, whenever there are summing points in cascade, you can interchange the signals that are added to the summing points. Next, let us say you have blocks in parallel which are converging at a common summing point. So, let this block be G 1, we will take another block G 2 and another block g 3. Okay. So, you have a common signal x 1 that is input to each of these blocks and these are again converging at a common summing point. Right? So, this is plus, this is plus and this is plus. So, this signal let us say it is x 2. Okay. Now, this can be represented by a single block diagram which will be equal to sum of all the transfer functions of each of the block that is g 1 plus g 2 plus g 3. This will be equal to x 2. Okay. So, you can verify this also. Here the output will be g 1 x 1, here it will be g 2 x 1 g 3 x 1. So, x 2 will be equal to g 1 x 1 plus g 2 x 1 plus g 3 x 1. Here also you will find the same output. What will happen if one of the sign is negative? That means, let us say this g 2 we take negative. Then corresponding here you will take g 1 minus g 2. Okay? As simple as that. One more important technique is let us say you have a feedback loop. Okay. This is a block okay. this is g and let us say this is h. Okay. So, we are taking the feedback path as h. Now, this let us say this is positive and this can be either positive or negative. So, we can represent by a single block what will be the transfer function of the block? It will be the transfer function of a closed loop transfer function right because this is a closed loop transfer function. So, the equivalent transfer function will be g by 1 minus or plus g h. Okay. So, if you are having positive sign in the feedback, you will have negative sign in the denominator of the transfer function and if you have negative sign in the feedback, then you will have positive sign in the denominator of the transfer function. So, these are some more reduction techniques. Okay. Now, in this one you have a summing point first and a block next. So, you have to shift the summing point to after the block. That means, the block is coming first now and the summing point is coming second. In such a case, what do you do? You have x 1 and x 2 here being added to the summing point. Okay. So, if you shift it to after the block, then you just have to add one block here before we add it to the summing point. Okay. So, you can verify this the output of the summing point is x 1 plus or minus x 2 and here you are getting x 1 plus or minus x 2 into g okay. and here also you are getting the same output. Okay. So, this is how you can shift a summing point to which is before a block to after the block. Okay. Now, similarly if you want to shift the summing point before a block. Okay. So, here you can see that it is after this block, you can shift it 
before like this in this case what you are doing you are adding a block here but it will be inverse of the transfer function of this block ok so you are adding 1 by j here ok so this also you can verify in the same manner the same output you are going to get next you have shifting a takeoff point to after a block ok so you have a takeoff point before a block now you have to shift it to this point like this ok so what can you do then so here we are adding a block which is inverse of the transfer function of the block ok so you can see that the takeoff point is x1 well the output is x1g the output will remain same that that is not the problem we have to see if the signal that is being taken off is remaining the same ok so here the signal is x1g if you are taking the block diagram 1 by g then this will become x1g into 1 by g which is x1 ok so this is how you can shift a takeoff point from before a block to after a block the next one is shifting a takeoff point before a block that means a takeoff point is present after the block and you have to shift it such that it is before the block ok then you will have to add a block which has the same transfer function that is g next you have a takeoff point here ok before a summing point and you have to shift it to after the summing point ok so in this case what will happen the summing point is here this is the takeoff point and the output should be x right so what you are going to do is you have to add a summing point here and if the signal z that is being added is positive then you have to put a negative sign here and if the signal z is added negatively in the main path then in this path you have to add positively ok so that way you can get the same signal at the takeoff point now the next one is the takeoff point is there after a summing point and you have to shift it before the summing point in this case what you have to do you also have you here also you have to add a summing point ok but in whatever sign the signal z is being added to the main path in the same sign it should be added to the summing point also ok so that is when the output of the takeoff point will remain the same 